This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. How are you? I'm Alex Bennett, and this is Gabnet's Rampage, issue number one. And what is it all about? Well, let me uh, let me uh, elucidate here for you uh, that it's uh, it's uh, one of many things. Uh, it, 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 let me let me just say how it came to be, and how the title came to be. Well, one day I, because I'm getting older and I just, I, I have all loss of any kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, the sense of things. Uh, I uh, was typing in the name of the show, which was the Ramble, and I typed in the word Rampage. And I said to myself, wow, that, that's not a bad term, Rampage. I have to think about that as a title for a show. And then I said to myself, um, at another point, yeah, I'd really like to do a show during the day, uh, but I, you know, I'm already doing a show at night, and I don't want to do two shows in a day. And so, how do I accomplish all of this? And what came about was this program. And what this program is going to be is it's not going to be on every day. You're going to have to look for it. It's going to happen, and uh, we will announce it like oh, maybe a day ahead of time. Uh, but that's why we call this. Rampage issue number one. We're going to call it issues. Tomorrow we may not do one. We may not do one till next week. We may do one uh, tomorrow. We don't know. Okay, it's how we're feeling at the moment. So I'm not calling them by the date. I'm calling them by an issue, and I'm calling it issue number one. And uh, this is issue number one of uh, Rampage. And what is it going to be? Well, we're going to figure that out. This is a work in progress. Uh, we are going to take calls later on in the program. Uh, and how long is the program going to be? Well, some minutes, sometimes it may be 10 minutes long because there's nothing happening or I'm bored or nobody's calling or whatever. Or it could wind up being two hours because I'm having the time of my life. I don't want it to be two hours because tonight, at 10 o'clock, I'm going to be doing a program right here uh, at Gabnet uh, called Ramble. So I do that for two hours. So uh, that being the case, um, we're going to take it kind of a day at a time, as it were. So today is the first issue, okay, let's call it that, of Gabnet's Rampage. I also called it Gabnet's Rampage as opposed to Alex Bennett's Rampage because, quite frankly, the name Alex Bennett appears far too much on, uh, on the Gabnet uh, uh, webpage. So anyway, uh, this, is, uh, this is an experiment, and we're going to see how it's going to work. One of the experiments that I decided to do today was I have never before in any of the interviews that we do with comics and so on literally had video of that comic. And today I did that. And a couple of hours ago, uh, noon Eastern, uh, we uh, we interviewed uh, Will Durst. Uh, so all the things are uh, are uh, pretty up to date and so on. So let's try the experiment now and go back to a little bit earlier today and talk with our good friend Will Durst. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting, presenting the fabulous. The fabulous. Will, Will Durst. Durst. Hello, Hello Willie. Willie. How, How are you? Are you? Hello, How, are you How are you, sir? I'm doing, I'm doing just fine. fine. How, How have the last couple of weeks been treating you politically? politically? Uh, it's, it's been very cocooned. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I never, never heard, heard that, that word before. Cocooned. Oh, cocooned. Maybe I've heard it as fertile. Yeah, maybe I've heard it as fecund. Oh, oh, I see. Uh, maybe, maybe. I, don't I don't know. know. It's, it's been fertile. fertile. You, know, you know, you use these goddamn, goddamn big words on us here in the country. country. We, don't we don't know what you're talking about. about. You, you damn, damn intellectual elite trying to trick us with your multiplication tables, tables and shit. But, but, but you don't intend to do your comedy show in any holler somewhere. 
you know, you know I'm, I'm going, going back, back to Colorado, Colorado and Wisconsin, and so I'm, 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 I'm yeah. 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 How, how, are, are, how are those people to work for? for? Are, are they, uh, they, okay? they okay? You know, you know my, my show... show I get, I get the, the Illuminati. Illuminati. I, get I get the, the true, true believers. believers. Uh, I, I actually, when I when do, I do press, press, I say the show, show is, is not, not for everyone. everyone. If, you're if you're a big Trump, Trump supporter, supporter, you are going to be disappointed, disappointed and, and maybe even a little bit angry, angry at the end of the show. show. I wouldn't I come. And, and uh, fortunately, fortunately uh, they are not comfortable going, going out to theaters. theaters. And uh, see, see, seeing, seeing um, um, uh, sarcasm, sarcasm and, and irony, irony, and, and they, they like their humor up front, up front good, good natured. Nature, so, so f- fuck them. Do you find any sense of humor about, about all of this has kind, kind of waned in a way? Because I was saying the other day that it was it was funny for a while. It was, it was cute, cute and, and, you know, you know almost kind of nearly funny. funny. Watching, watching him propel, propel himself across, across the room by lighting his own verbal flatulence. But, but, but no, but not, not so much. Did you see him push, push uh, the Prime Minister of Montenegro? Yeah. Yeah. He's an oaf. He's an oaf. Yeah. 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 he said, out of the way, pal. But my, but my, 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 my wife always, always likes to come up with stuff, with stuff uh, that, that, that she, she feels is the newest gaffe that, that, that he did. And there, and there was one the other, the other day, day, I didn't see this, but where, but where they, were they were all walking and he was taking, taking a golf cart. cart. That was reported in the New York Times. I have yet to find it as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't know if it's well. But if it's New York Times, it's got to be true. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, the, uh, the, the ancient, ancient town, town of whatever, whatever it was in Italy, Italy where the G7, G7 met. met. Yeah. Yeah. And, of, and course, of course, he had, he had to have his staff investigate to see how G1 through, through G6 went, went because he, he, he didn't, didn't want to just, just catch the sea. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know G, it, used it used to be the G8, G8 but, but Russia got kicked out for annexing Crimea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't it a G20 at one time or something, if I remember correctly? That's different. This, 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 is, different. this, this, is, this is just, just the top, top guys. guys. Oh, oh, I see. There's another this, this is the special club. Yeah, you have to have a membership card on this one. Yeah, Carl Malden. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, but, 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 I mean, it, it just, it, it, it's, it's kind of ceased, ceased to be funny. funny. I, you know, it was humorous. It was, it was uh, uh, fecund, fecund or whatever, or whatever the word was. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it was, uh, it was uh, hilarious. But, but now, now it's just not, not funny. funny. It's, it's embarrassing. I'm an American and the rest of the world is laughing at us. Yeah. 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 yeah, welcome, 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 welcome to, to what, what uh, we've been, we've been doing, doing to them. And, 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 and he thinks the Saudis, the Saudis loved, loved him because they gave him a sword. They just knew that he could be had. That's all. He was a sucker. You know, he was in town, and they were they were going to get him in the car and take him all the bad parts of town and sell him souvenirs. <laughs> he's not just a whore. He's a cheap whore. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, he just you know. I, I'd like to think that a guy who had made that much money was bright on some level. You know, I'm uh, you talk about Gerald Kushner, for instance. I don't think Kushner's stupid. Kushner's smart as a whip, right? But man, well, you know, I've, I've uh, never heard him talk. Uh, well, did you see the thing? You didn't see the thing John Oliver did, where he said you never see him talk, but we do have a clip of him talking. And it was oh, really? Kushner giving a speech or saying something or whatever, and they dubbed in Gilbert Gottfried's voice. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see Gilbert still working. Well, they they say, oh, Kushner's in a lot of trouble. Do you think he's in a lot of trouble? Well, what he did was he went to the Russian ambassador and he said. Uh, we want to set up a direct line between the White House and uh, the Kremlin. You know, like a red red phone, mm-hmm. only our intelligence a- agency won't m- be monitoring it. So it'll be just a direct private line. And <laughs> the intelligence agency is a bit aghast. Uh, and, you know, this could be, I don't think it's illegal. 
See, that's the thing. I don't well, think it's... But did he do this after Trump became president or before? During the transition. During the transition. Isn't that logical that they would try and create some kind of way to speak to the Russians and to do it so the Russians would feel comfortable with it? Yeah. See, there's See, your problem. Yeah. It's not illegal. And, and Kushner isn't going to drop... A, you know, there wasn't Kushner's idea. You know, it came from higher up. And uh, I don't think Kushner's going to roll over on his father-in-law, you know. <laughs> Although, if the tables were turned, Trump would give Kushner up like that. Faster yeah. than free beer disappears at a frat party celebrating a homecoming win over Auburn. <laughs> which is, which is really but, I mean, uh, everybody, you know, everybody's into this whole thing about uh, oh well, we're going to impeach him, and we're going to find stuff on him. And we're going to—they're not going to be able to impeach this guy. Just get used to the fact that he's your president, and now you have to come up with ways to number one, stock the pond over at the Congress, okay, for, and pay attention to that, and to um, uh, uh, find ways to blunt him. I agree. You know, and that it's a waste of time saying, "Oh well, we're going to find some something to impeach him on." And, oh, this is the look at what he did here. This is illegal. Yeah, all of it's probably illegal, but you know, you got to prove it. You got to go into uh, into 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 the Congress and uh, make it. Uh, uh, well, the a, House a impeaches them, and the Senate votes on it. Yeah. So that's neither one of those is going to happen. Yeah. So. Folks, get over it. Don't waste yeah. your time. It's a waste maybe of energy. Maybe in 2019, you know, maybe. Well, it, no, I, it's a waste of energy, and the only non-waste of energy is between now and then establishing the Democratic Party or whatever party as having the right ideas and, and starting to stock the pond in the Senate and in the Congress um, for uh, a, a better way of life, as it were. But don't well, sit around. We've got to protect. America from him we have to put a seatbelt or you know some padding around America well you can make things rough for him I mean you know certainly every time any one of his little things goes to court one of his executive orders goes to court it seems to somehow just you know go yeah. nowhere yeah because it's unconstitutional yeah the thing is what I'm afraid of is that uh, America is going to be attacked, either actively or in theory. You know, it, we could just be attacked in theory, and they can yeah. claim that we were being attacked and show some bogus evidence, and then all sorts of shit could come down. Uh, people rallying behind our our glorious leader, martial law declared. People have to sign a loyalty oath in order to do uh, business with the government, and then that trickles down, and then people start uh, uh, enforcing the loyalty oath. Right. And so shit could go sideways. That's what I'm afraid of. Yeah, you, you're afraid he's not going to be able to handle the uh, uh, a, a real crisis, is what you're saying. No, I'm I'm afraid he's going to be in collusion, which is the famous word collusion, uh, to create a crisis. Well, I mean, you know, there's there's a lot of argument to the fact that 9/11 was in some ways caused by by Bush, because they they knew it was coming, but they knew that if it happened, it would be good for Bush. Well, the same could be said of December seventh, nineteen forty one. Yeah. Well, uh, there are some people who believe we knew uh, Pearl Harbor was coming. In right. fact, the the the, uh, the Japanese um, ambassadors left the day beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, watch their families if their families are still here. Well, uh, you know, at that time, Roosevelt had no way to g I I at least get the hearts and minds of America into getting into uh, World War Two or the war in Europe. And so, therefore, his decision was, uh, let this thing happen that we think is going to happen, and then we will have an excuse to arm the country, to go to war against Japan, and while we're at it, then we can go to Europe. Yeah, look at, look at the fervor that happened. 
Oh yeah. I mean, all across America, how many how many men went to went to you know sign up for the military? You know what our biggest problem was? If there was ever a just war, if there was ever a war we went into where we we were pretty right about doing it. All right, it was World War Two. Yeah. And we came back and we felt good about ourselves. <clears throat> We were lighter by about 500,000 human beings, <clears throat> and a lot of people came back and had problems mentally and otherwise. And, uh, you know, in those days, I remember growing up in the, uh, in, in the late uh, um, 40s um, as a kid, seeing people with one leg walking around the neighborhood and with arms missing and things. You saw a lot of that. A lot. Yeah. But we felt good about ourselves. We felt we had done something just and right and that we had prevailed. And since then, we have never, ever fought an honorable war because we justify it by still having that attitude that look at what we did in World War II. Yeah, well, well we got drunk on righteousness. <laughs> we get drunk on righteousness, exactly. Uh, and... Uh, uh, you know, I just, I just think that we, I can't think of a war we did that, you know, was Korea a, a real uh, important war? I mean, was it a Not war? World War One was as righteous as World War Two. Yeah, because well, Hitler was, you know, just, uh, um, uh, just uh, he's the pinnacle of evil in in terms of, and I'm sure he didn't think he was evil. You know, he he had bad experiences. Uh, as a kid, and you know, nobody wakes up and wonders how deep of a reeking heap of steaming feces they can lay. I mean, people think even Hitler had a girlfriend, you know. Yeah, he was a vegetarian. Dog loved him. You know, he didn't think he was a bad guy. Nobody thinks he's a bad guy, but he was a bad guy. You know, I, and I, was, I, I question how much Hitler knew of what was going on behind the scenes. How much did he know about the concentration camps? I mean, did he order them? He signed off on the final solution. He signed off on the final solution. Okay. But I just I just wonder. I mean, you're right. I don't think it was his idea. You know, I think there might have been he might have had somebody evil or I think it was, I think boy. It was, he might have had a Steve Bannon. Yeah, I was going to say I, I think maybe it was Steve Bannon. I think Bannon has lived forever. <laughs> you know. Uh, but you no, you're right. I mean, Hitler probably thought, "Hey, I'm doing the right thing. How can anybody hate what I'm doing? I'm a nice guy. My girlfriend loves me, as you said. My dog loves me, uh, and all these people tell me how great I am. And I'm a vegetarian. I don't kill animals. Yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> what can you say? I know. Uh, I mean, uh, so I mean. It, 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 but in this case, you know, we just have. A, I, I worry about the big problem. Let's let's say there is a unrelenting amount of terrorism that starts in this country. He's not prepared to handle it. He, you know, he can talk a big talk. He can say, "I don't like what happened." Oh, that's terrible. You know. Oh, this is those are thugs that are doing. It. But it's all talk. It's not protecting us. Yeah, and he's going to leverage uh, unconstitutional reactions because of it. Uh, but we, we, you know, we have the infrastructure in place to take care of it. The, the amazing thing is the intelligence community hates him so much. And he doesn't understand this. He doesn't, because he, he can always get past shit. You know, I mean, you think of his gig as a New York City real estate developer. And it's all based on propulsion and and momentum and that's why he just promises stuff to get him from a to b yeah yeah i'll do that yeah i'll do that and then he gets to b and there's never any recourse they don't they don't say but you said you were going to do that well i'll do it later and he just keeps going forward to get to the point and all these people are left behind that's why he promises all this stuff that he's going to do whatever it takes just to say yes to get to the next point. He believes in propulsion. He doesn't believe in ramifications. And uh, in government, there are ramifications because you have these these checkpoints. So that's, he, he just, he uses bullying, he uses threats, 
he uses promises, he insults, he just goes forward, just keeps going forward. And he doesn't realize it. You don't piss off the intelligence community. They blew their trace on the Russian ambassador just to embarrass Jared Kushner. They blew that trace by announcing that they had, or whoever leaked it to the New York Times or Washington Post, to, they, they blew that trace that they had. They had a bug on the Russian ambassador, and they blew it because they didn't care because they wanted to embarrass Trump. Well, what about, you know, he talks about leaks in the White House. You know, he's paranoid about there are people leaking stuff from the White House. And yet the biggest leaker of all is Donald Trump. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's gotten to the point where the British have said, we're not going to tell you any more secrets. You, <laughs> you know, we, you don't, we, we, we don't, we don't, you cannot be trusted with our secrets. Germany said the same thing. That's what Angela Merkel said the same thing yesterday. Really? Yeah. She said, "Well, we're going to have to do this alone. We can't. We can't count on America anymore." <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh my! Oh my! It's ridiculous. And then you look at, you know, I mean, uh, he was inaugurated on January twenty first. That was one hundred and thirty, one hundred thirty one days ago. Yeah. Uh, and and already multiple congressional investigations. Already a special prosecutor has been appointed. I mean, he's in less than four months, he's gone from zero to Nixon. He's gone from zero to Nixon? <laughs> yeah, you're right. You're right. Son of a bitch. You know. Uh, but he, he, he you know, uh, uh, the one thing I told people when he started uh, leaking this stuff is that the great danger in him leaking it was the fact that... Uh, uh, other countries would not be willing to trust us with the uh, secure information. Exactly. And that puts him in a very bad situation because we've just <laughs> we've got to rely on our own uh, only upon our own uh, security forces here in America, people like the CIA, people like the FBI and and they're, they're not the <laughs> most efficient people in the world. You know, so I mean, it's it, it's it's just it's an amazing thing that's happening here. Um, and it's funny, he leaked the fact that he leaked uh, the other day. Uh, he was because remember he he had that meeting with the Russian ambassador and the other Russian diplomat in the Oval Office, and no um, domestic press was allowed. So we only found out uh, and and from uh, the the Russian news agency. And then it, it came out that he had told them some information that the Israelis told us about ISIS. And then he was in Israel on this trip, and he said, I never said it was Israel. <laughs> well, my favorite thing, my favorite thing. Of, I never said uh, it was it, Israel. I know, he, you know, he kept saying it over and over again, too. <laughs> he kept saying, it wasn't Israel, it wasn't Israel. I didn't say it was Israel. I didn't say no, it was Israel. No, he didn't Israel. say it wasn't Israel. He said, I never said it was Israel. <laughs> <laughs> Intimating that it was Israel, but he never said it. It was other people who said it was Israel. The best one, the best one is Duarte, where he told the, the president of the Philippines, I guess that's his name, Duarte, uh, that uh, we had submarines off the coast of North Korea. Uh, number one, you don't tell Duarte that. Okay, you don't tell anybody that. It's a secret. Submarines go underwater for a purpose. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to be found. They want to be yeah, able to be found spy. They want to be able to put their periscopes up and look at stuff, you know? But they go underwater for a reason. They don't float on top of the water to get to where they're going, you know? And, I mean, the man is just, he has no sense of what you don't tell people. It's almost like he's bragging. I know this, you know? Yeah, I know something you don't, yeah. Yeah, and he's telling all the wrong that people. Used to be, for him, that's a negotiating tool, and that he he's always been... You know, when he got inside information, that was a negotiating tool for him to get what he wanted. Yeah. And sometimes he would share it with people to prove how powerful he was. And other times he would use it against them. 
To him, it's just a negotiating tool. He doesn't understand. So, I, you know, I wonder if there's anybody in the White House that's capable of telling him, stop it. I think Ivanka, and I think that's it. Yeah, but he doesn't, apparently, apparently he doesn't listen to her. You know, the minute he's off script is when he's dangerous. And when he's on script, he's reading the fucking teleprompters so badly. Have you noticed how badly he reads a speech? You know, it's like, I want to read it and get the fuck out of here. Yeah, and he emphasizes the wrong words, and then he tries to throw, he tries, he goes off script for a couple of words to, because he repeats everything. He repeats everything. You know. I mean, you know, he always like accused. Like double talk. Well, he, he, always accu- everything. he always accused Obama of using the teleprompters. And Obama, at least when he used the teleprompters, knew how to use them. Knew how to make it look like he wasn't reading it. I never understood that 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 accusation. I never. He uses. Everybody uses a teleprompter since Eisenhower. Everybody. Well, there's, uses a, there's a good a reason for it. You don't want to say something wrong. You know. Remember when uh, when uh, Sarah Palin. Um, was accusing Obama of using a teleprompter, and then it turned out that she had notes inked, felt tipped onto her hand while she was talking about <laughs> Obama's use. Of, you know what? You it's, know what? It's the notes, high school crib sheet. That, yeah, that's a fifth grade teleprompter. That's what that is. That's <laughs> for teleprompter for people who can't read. Fast. Well, the, the the point is the reason you use a teleprompter is you want to write the speech ahead of time so that you don't go off script, so that you don't say something wrong that might be mistaken, and, and you've you've worked out your words ahead of time. There's nothing wrong with a teleprompter. What's wrong is when you look like you're reading it. Yeah. Well, he came to that skill so late. Well, and this he, is another reason why you he know, came to the, they came to the skill of being president too late. Is uh, uh, politics? This is why traditionally the presidency has not been an entry level position. Exactly, and as I said before, the trouble with Trump is he isn't used to the fact this is the first time he's ever had a job where he wasn't the boss. Right. You know, right. he the, where the he is an employee. And he doesn't and know how to be an employee. He's an oversight. Huh? Constant oversight. Yeah. And he bristles. But what I love is that any of these right-wingers, when they don't like what is being reported, go, well, that's fake news. They, they brush aside any fact that may come across as fake news. That's their excuse. You know, stupid. It's really yeah, stupid. It's, it's, a new, yeah, it's their new chew toy. So, any, so anyway, things are good for you. This has got to be just a, just a wonderful thing. There were a couple of weeks back where every day there was a new gem thrown every your way. Every single day. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, yeah. a regular, regular thing. It's well, pretty exciting. Well, hey, Will, you know, we've, we've blown another 25 minutes here. Well, uh, it's been great having breakfast with you. Lunch, your time. Lunch, but yeah. We're doing this around great. noon uh, in New York. And nine o'clock in the morning there for a comedian, he gets up awfully early. And uh, get me a gig in New York so I can come and uh, visit you alive. Hey, get me a gig in New York, <laughs> and I'll, I'll do the same thing. Anyway, hey, well, great talking to you again. Let's do this in a couple of weeks, okay? I'm totally up for it, Alex Bennett. Thank you very much, Will Durst, ladies and gentlemen. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Let me turn the music down. Our thanks to Will Durst for having joined us. Uh, That was our first experiment with actually using the video. It was a little out of sync at times, uh, something I have to solve. In the beginning, there was an echo because I was the first time I had set things so I thought they would work, and so I, uh, I, uh, I changed them around. Anyway, welcome back to Gabnet's Rampage. Okay, that's, that's what we're calling this thing. And we're going to do it occasionally. We're not going to do it every day. We're going to, we'll let you know ahead of time when we're going to do them. 
uh, but uh, it's my uh, my desire to slowly maybe move my show to uh, to uh, uh, <laughs> uh, weekdays uh, and uh, you know not have to stay up so late at night. I could actually go to sleep with my wife actually if I wanted to. Uh, but anyway, if she'll let me, let me put it that way. Uh, anyway, I'll tell you what we're going to do also on this show as well. Um, we are going to take calls from our citizens panel if we get any calls. Now, we may not get any calls. I'm opening up the phone lines now. If you have Skype, you simply call, uh, and it's a, it's a simple do here, uh, no, no big deal. Uh, you simply uh, go to Skype, download Skype, and then when you've got it and installed it, it's very simple to install. So simple, a moron could do it. And I've taught morons how to do it. Um, and uh, it's uh, pretty, uh, pretty simple. And then you just call uh, GabNet uh, Live. GabNet Live, J-B-N-E-T-L-I-V-E. And that's how you call and become part of a citizen's panel. Now, also... Um, well, here comes somebody right now. Here is he's usually he's usually the first guy who calls me when when oh he's got to turn down his audio. There we go. No, we've got some audio on you. We got some audio on you somewhere. There you got it. No, still there. Still there. What am I hearing? Huh? Well, it's nothing here. I'm doing something wrong, Alex. You no, do, you, yeah, you're doing it's something there. wrong. It's, uh, huh? It's the Facebook. It's the Facebook. It's the Facebook. Okay, never mind. There you go. Okay, now we'll put you. Then give me a picture that so we can. The, I shut it down on yeah on the one, but I forgot the Facebook was open. Yeah, I was listening to it there. Yeah. So anyway, uh, give me your picture so we can all see you. Oh. There we go because that's his uh, his Trump picture. And here comes, oh, oh, you know, it's wonderful doing the show during the day. You're out yes, there in the backyard, hanging out, doing nothing. I had to start drinking earlier, though. You had to start drinking earlier? <laughs> no, you don't have. <laughs> it's a little early in the day for me, but. You know. Now, are you still in Iowa? No, no, I'm uh, I'm back home. You're back home. Go yeah, I, uh, I, uh, I got home right before your show on Friday night. Yeah. And I, I like about right about nine o'clock, and uh, I was too tired to call in, of course. But I think we had a full house or something. Oh like yeah, that. you did, so you did. It was, it was a good yeah. show. I listened yeah. to it. It was a great show. Now the difference with doing a show during the day is I actually find that I get more listeners, right? Okay. But that I don't get as many callers. Well, that's good. Yeah, mainly because I think people are probably at work and they're listening to this thing. Now, I'm also doing something here that I've never done before. This is not going out over GabNet. This is just going out over Facebook. Oh, see, when I killed it on uh, probably on GabNet, it wouldn't have affected it anyway. No. Well, yeah. no, when you killed I, I had to go to GabNet to sign into the Skype. Yeah. Uh, but the face, but what you had on was the Facebook, which is, yeah. and that's the only place we're doing it because I want to see what happens when we only do it on Facebook. Okay. okay. You know, do I need the whole fucking network? That's my question. <laughs> but. I did like the name. Uh, when I, I, I saw it yesterday when you posted that you're going to do the Rampage, I said, well, that's a great name. You know, and I got to thinking, you know, for for an older guy, this guy's very creative and coming up with the, you know good names. Well, no, th this things. one came up by accident because <laughs> because I'm I'm such an old fart, okay, that I uh, uh, <laughs> that I uh, uh, one day in typing it, I guess in a post or whatever, I put down rampage instead of ramble, and I went, it's not a bad name for a show. <laughs> yeah. It, it took talent to recognize that it was a good name. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, if there's anybody else that wants to call, I would love to hear from other people. Uh, you know, uh, it, it, that that's why this is going to be every now and then. Why this is issue one. This isn't uh, the Tuesday version of the Rampage. Cause I, I, I wanted to be on the historic first issue what well you are on the historic first issue the other thing is is that like tomorrow for instance i have a uh, physical therapy but i may be home in time to do it if i feel like doing it but i don't know 
you know. So I just I take the I don't know kind of. It's it's a lot easier on me and uh, uh, whatever. But uh, um, uh, did you enjoy watching Will Durst for a change? Yes, I did. I, I, and it, was, it was freaky because it's like I'm looking at Will Durst, I'm looking at you, and I'm like, it's the same guy. <laughs> you guys look very similar in 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 your in, in your appearance. It, it, we the, both the, had the mustache, the, the grays, and everything. And yeah, the, he's what? got he's got a full head of hair. I don't I don't know where he got that from, but he's got a full head of hair at sixty five. And you do too. You, you, your age, you got a full head of hair. Look at that. How do you do that? The, the genetics must be incredible. Oh, my dad was, he was uh, extremely bald headed. Yeah. Yeah, but my question is when's the last yeah, one, time? Only one brother that's bald headed too. What, when's the last time you got a haircut? It was uh, October. Oh, really? Yeah. So, are you, what are you going to, how long, are you going to let it really grow long or? As long as Trump's in, as as long as Trump is the president, I'm not going to cut it. Is that your vow? I might have to trim it now and then, well, or whatever. You, you don't. You, you're retired, right? Yeah. So you don't have to like uh, uh, go to work and have them say, "Hey, you're not looking appropriate to the situation." Well, yeah. You know, I thought you know early on that I might end up someday going back to work or whatever, but it doesn't appear that that's happened. It's this is my uh, uh, this is my three year anniversary as a retiree. Uh, I've go, I've hit four. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I, I I don't consider myself retired because I didn't. You know, you said I'm I'm retiring, right? Yes, sir. N nobody told you you were retiring. I was forced. Well, they, kind of, they kind of forced me into a new job, and I didn't like it, so I, yeah. I quit. I'm kind I quit. of been forced. And same time i've kind of been forced into retirement uh who's calling on the phone here this is jason hey, hey jason how are you hey i'm good man don't take away my every other friday don't take oh oh it's jason i couldn't tell you jason. because it's because you're on the phone oh yeah, not, now scott's having punum. scott's having trouble getting a picture through now turn your oh, turn, turn your camera off turn it back on again yeah. Uh, let's see if it uh, pops I only had a quick minute because I'm at work, but like I said, that's why I just want to make sure you know to remind you. At least give me my every other Friday. Oh, okay. No, I know. I will give. I, I will give you your every other Friday. Okay. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good show. Okay. That. Uh, let's see Bye. when Jason goes. If we get. Uh, um, if, the camera's on, if, but if we get Scott back, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Remove this like person. The room. Okay. <laughs> now let's see. Try your camera again. You know, uh, see you. What? Wow. Yeah. It just, it's just whirling around. See that folks, how it's whirling around. One person calls in, messed up the whole stream. Look oh, at that. Uh, okay. Well, hang up and call me again. All right. All right. Okay. If I do it right this time. Uh, yeah. See, he's going to call me again. So we'll, uh, we'll be able to check in on him. Uh, Bob Eberth looks like he's coming online. Maybe we will get some people for this. You know, I don't know how long this is going to go each day. Uh, we're going to take it as long as it needs to be. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Where is Scott? Scott isn't calling back. Scott, Scott, call me Scott. Oh, there, there we go. Here comes Scott. Uh, all right, Scott. Now let's see. Uh, uh, turn on your, uh, turn on your camera. There you are. There you are again. I, I mean, I love doing this show during the day because what I do is I get people sitting outside, there's sunlight. It invigorates me. <laughs> it's one way to get outside, right? Yeah, you know. Uh, here comes Bob Eberth. Let's see if we lose if we lose Scott. No, we're not losing Scott, but we don't. We, wait a minute. Now we've lost Scott, but hold on a second, everybody. Hold on. Hold on. There's Scott. And, and Bob, are you there? Yes, I am. Turn on your camera, Bob. There we go. Bob turns on his camera. There we go. We're, we're fine now. ta -da. It says my camera's off. Can you see me? Yeah, I can see. Yeah, don't, don't, yeah that's fine. Yeah, don't worry I know about what it. I look like. Don't, don't worry about it. Uh, uh, Skype is an angry monster. Yeah. Anyway, how you doing, Bob? Oh, not too bad. Is this more convenient for you? Yes and no. 
<laughs> I just happened to be online, saw you were doing it, and I said, okay. Yeah, yeah. And I've been wanting to call in, but uh, I had my program manager from England over for 10 days, and we went to Canada a couple times and ran all over upstate New York. Oh, really? Nice. Now, tell them what you do. You have a radio program, but it's not here. No, I uh, do uh, an FM uh, radio station in Cornwall, England, and I'm the weekend disc jockey. And 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 uh, is it is it in a hospital? Did you say or something? Or? It started out as hospital radio, but they've got themselves an FM license as their community station. Oh, that's cool. That's and, very cool. Yeah, and it's on the internet and it's on the airwaves, and it's been fun. I've been with that station about three years now. Really? Uh, and and uh, how did how did you how did you know? You live where, Bob, again? Uh, I, I'm in Whitehall, New York. Whitehall, New York. So you're in Whitehall, New York. How did you suddenly decide you were going to do Had you done radio before this? Uh, about 14 years ago, there was a, an advertisement on the web, anyone could be a DJ. And some rich kids in England set up an, a, an internet station. So I was doing Friday and Saturday shows. Yeah. And then when they uh, made the laws on paying... Uh, royalties and stuff <laughs> yeah these kids shut down the station and i was invited on to another station yeah and i was with them for about 10 years and they shut down and i was invited on to this one yeah now uh, do you play music what do you do with your show well i do three different shows one of them is independent and alternative music yeah another one is anything i want i can do jazz blues whatever yeah and then my third show is Bollywood music from Bollywood movies. Oh, wow. That I would love to hear. And you can tune me in. It's on uh, chbnradio.org. chbnradio.org. Yeah. Yeah. And just check the schedule. Uh, my shows are Weekends from Jupiter Hollow, Jupiter Hollow Desified, and the Ragbag Radio Hour. Mm -hmm. And how do you get it over there? You just uh, you send them a signal and they just... Play it, Basically, right? what I've been doing is I pre-record my shows and then just upload them, and then they download them to the station. Oh, wow. Uh, and Scott, turn your camera back on. It just went off. Are you but, the, uh, are you yeah, the? all three of my shows air every weekend, and then there's some replays during the week. And if you just go to the station schedule, there's a five-hour difference between you and the station. Really? Okay. All right, hold on a second. I want to see if I can do something with Scott here. See if I can just add him to the call. Let's see here. Call Skype. Let me see if I call him. What happens? Uh, he may not. He may not pick up something. Maybe he lost connection or something. Oh no! No, no, wait a minute. No, no. Call on hold. Resume call. All right, all right, wait a minute. Are you? Uh, we. We. we uh, oh, there. Are you? Uh, let me see here. Resume call. There you are, Bob. Okay. I don't know what happened to Scott. Here comes Scott. Okay. Add to group. Okay. Hello, Scott. Am I here? Yeah. What happened? Uh, let's see. I tried to turn my camera back on and off to cycle it, see if it would show up. But can yeah. you see me now? No. Oh, weird. There. Now ah. Now. Oh. Now it looks. There you are. You're there. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I it was it was grayed out, and I tried to turn it on and off, to make sure it was still working and whatnot. But I had to log out and come back in. Yeah, yeah. It could be could be you're you're in the uh, you're in the what, the backyard, I guess. Yeah. And uh, how's your Wi-Fi there? It's excellent, because oh. the it's right next to the bedroom, pretty much. Oh, I see. Okay, so you're fine yeah. with that. Okay. Anyway, more people call, please. More people call. Let's let's see if they if they call. Um, uh, I um, yeah. So you think the experiment with having oh uh, uh, in the beginning of the interview with Will Durst, let me just say to people, you heard a kind of a doubled over sound, and that's because this was the first time I ever tried this, and I had the switch switched wrong, and now I have it switched right. So when I play Durst tonight on the show, it should look okay. The only thing I have a problem with is the sync. And that's because I did it on another machine. Next time I'm going to do it on this machine. Okay? So, what have you? You know, life goes on. Uh, 
So uh, uh, there's nothing that much in the news today, you know. A little bit. We had Tiger Woods who got arrested for DUI, but it seems like he may not have been drunk but that he was on some medicine or something, and it made him loopy. He has back issues, so he yeah. takes back pain medicine. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I in, believe it. In fact, where, where is it? I ha he actually wrote a, uh, a uh, comment on it. Um, they said they found no alcohol in his system. And uh, I'm trying to look. I, ha I had his statement somewhere here. Um I guess I don't. I thought I did. Uh, but um, he was found asleep at the wheel uh, on the side of a six-lane Florida road in Ooh. the dark of the morning, the engine running and the right blinker flashing. His speech was slow and slurred, though there was no alcohol in his system, and he didn't know how far he was from home. The details contained in a police affidavit released Tuesday did little to clear up the curious circumstances of his whereabouts on Memorial Day morning, only to confirm that Wood's statement that he had not been drinking before he had been arrested for suspicion of DUI. Police described Woods as cooperative as much as possible and saying he had trouble keeping his eyes open. So that could be the result of some kind of medicine he was taking. You know, and maybe you take it and you figure it's not going to cause you a problem. It hasn't before. You get in the car. And, and, and it, to his uh, credit, he actually was pulled over to the side of the road. Yeah. So I'm sure he was aware that he had a problem. So how can they arrest him for a DUI driving under the influence when he wasn't driving? Well, that's kind of a blanket term now. They don't state what the you're being influenced by, but it is driving no, impaired. No, but the word here is driving. As long as the key is in the ignition, it's considered driving. Is that it? Yeah. Oh, if the okay. key would have been out of the ignition, sitting beside him, the engine was running, so it had to be run. Or the key had to be in the ignition, so yeah. Yeah. Now, he was, he was technically driving. He was technically driving. Yeah, but not moving. Okay, but he, you know, I, you can't exactly fault the guy for putting other people's lives in danger or anything like that. Uh, it could be been one of those ambient things, you know, that, that, that medicine, that sleep medicine, people have been caught driving before just be taking ambient. Uh, the, and they sleepwalk, get in the car, and start driving. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, it could be as innocent as that, I, but I, it's, it's, still a, it's still a dangerous thing, but, you know, how much is he guilty of it i i don't know i you know we don't know we, we the jury's still out i had a statement here and i don't know what i did with it that he actually made saying that he was he was not drinking he was uh, he was taking however some medicine and so on and so forth you know so anyway you know he's had he's had a lot of problems on the other hand i don't I feel wish i had his problem well yeah i don't feel sorry for him <laughs> The man makes a fortune. Yeah. And you're saying, well, how? He hasn't won a, uh, a golf tournament since, I think, 2008 or something like that, 2009. Uh, but how does it, so how does he make his money? He designs golf courses. You know, he has any, you know, of course, he has, uh, you know, some endorsements and things like that. He's doing very well. But he also said that in a, in a recent thing that he had his, is back fixed and he now can play again with comfort and that he's looking forward to playing golf again but is he too old to play with the young guys how old is he i don't even know anybody uh, there have been some very old yeah. people who have like won the masters and things like that right yeah. yes is is golf age do you play golf either of you play golf no not anymore no. i don't but you did Yes. So is it age dependent? Um, I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think it is. I mean, as long as you can swing it, you know, you can, you know, I, th I you know, I mean, you can easily play into your fifties and be still be very competitive and and even past that, but but you know, not maybe not as good as a younger guy. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, let me see here. Also, what else was in the news? Oh, you know who we lost? Manuel Noriega. Oh, yeah. And uh, Greg Allman? Well, yeah, but forget about Greg Allman. I'm more <laughs> interested in Noriega. Everybody, either of them, but well, he, you know, so I gotta tell you about Noriega. I always felt he got screwed by the United States of America, of course, he did, you know, that he didn't want to be their puppet anymore, so they arrested him and they put him in jail. And he spent the rest of his life in one prison after another without ever being tried. I don't think was he ever tried, I don't remember. Yeah, th th I don't think he was ever tried, he was just detained and then when we were through with him i think they handed him over to the french or something i think that's maybe where he died was in a foreign country but uh no he they the united states wanted him to cooperate on stuff and he didn't want to yeah and so they went in and they decided we really kind of did a coup created a coup in that country and uh I remember to try and get him to leave his premises because they couldn't arrest him while he was in the palace or whatever. Remember what they did? They started playing horrible rock music. <laughs> Greg Allman. At, 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 at large de de decibels. Yeah. Yeah. Were you ever a fan of Greg Allman's? No. Me neither. No. no Me no, neither. No. But he was young. Too young to die. Yeah. How, old, oh, how old? Do you want to hear a funny story? Sure. When we were coming back from Montreal, yeah, I was driving through one of the small towns and got pulled over by the police. I was doing 25 miles an hour over the limit. And I tried to be very nice to the cop. And basically, uh, because I was nice to the cop and had a clean record, he wrote me up for having an obstructed license plate so I wouldn't have any points and I wouldn't have a speeding violation. Wow. Driving 25 over the limit. Oh, I'll give you a better one. I was speeding going through upstate California. I swear this happened. It's the only time that my notoriety ever paid off. And I'm stopped by a cop. And he says, you were speeding back there. I went, oh, well, I'm sorry. You know, I was just trying to get back to San Francisco and so on. And he looks at me and says, you're Alex Bennett. And I said, yeah, I am. He said, oh, well, I'm a big fan of yours. I listen to you every morning. He said, have a nice night. And sent me on my way. That's cool. It's the only time my notoriety ever got me out of trouble. Usually it got me into trouble. You know, I, because I was imagining when I when he said, are you Alex Bennett? And I went, yes. In the back of my mind, I'm going, oh, boy, he's going to write a double ticket here because he doesn't like the show. But no, he liked the show, so he sent me on my way. And I've often said that I felt that was wrong of him because I was speeding. I should have gotten a ticket. I should have not gotten a ticket because I was somebody famous to him. Okay, but... You're not complaining. I'm not complaining, but I'm just saying he was being a bad cop is what he was being. Yeah, well, this cop really surprised me. He was really nice about it. And he says, this won't put any points. It won't affect your insurance. And basically says, but I got to justify pulling you over for something. So you got an obstructed license plate. Wait a minute. They can't just pull you off or find that there was nothing wrong and send you on your way? Apparently, he had to justify pulling me over and doing all the checks, you know. Because they check your records and all yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. Now, when was the last time I got a ticket? When was the last time I, I owned a car? I haven't owned a car in 10, what, 10 years? 15 years, maybe. It's got wow. going on. Yeah. That well, you, know, you, you move to New York, you don't want to have a car. You know, it's just not practical. Uh, if I lived out in Queens or something like that, I might have a car. But here in Manhattan, what? You know? Well, when my father lived in Queens, you, you couldn't park your car within a block or so of the house. Yeah. well, uh, it's, So even Queens is congested. Right. I mean, I could have a car here in New York, and so I would pay for the car. I would pay for the insurance, which would be double where it would be anywhere else. All mm -hmm. right. And then uh, I, uh, I, 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 could, uh, I could then uh, um, 
pay for a garage. That's about 700 800 a month. So, I mean, you know, it's, is it worth it for me to have a car? So whenever I really need a car, guess what? I rent it, you know, and then that's fine. Yeah. Uh, you know, although rentals have gotten a lot pretty expensive lately. But, you know, let's say I rent three times a year, which I don't. Uh, but let's say I did. I would still be cheaper than owning a car and upkeep on a car and garaging a car and doing all of that. And I do know people who don't have a garage. They park on the street, but they constantly have, you know, always in that thing. I got to get home early so I can get a parking space, you know. By the way, I went to, to a Broadway show on Sunday. Sunday. Uh, yeah. Uh, I went with Bobby Slayton because he had tickets, front row tickets, to um, the Carol King musical Beautiful. It's all about her life and her music. Between you and me, and don't tell Bobby, worst show I've ever seen. Just terrible. Things run four years because it's what they call a bridge and tunnel show. And a bridge and tunnel show is a show which uh, uh, appeals to people who are tourists, appeals to people in New Jersey who come over to see it. That's why they call it a bridge and tunnel show. But it's a very successful bridge and tunnel show. But all it is is all the music is, of course, already created music. It's not just hers. I mean, there are a lot of other things, people, the music they use in it as well. And I felt like, it, I don't know if this is going to make sense, like I was in the middle of a of, of a PBS Pledge Week. <laughs> you know? And, and, and they're, they're playing all these songs they would play, you know, on... And, and, and by people doing the songs of other people and pretending to be those people. And then this bridge and tunnel audience applauding like crazy because, you know, it's the best impression of Carol King they've ever heard. It yeah. might be the only impression of Carol King they ever heard. They, yeah, yeah. It just, and the script on the show is just pathetic. But I had to tell Bobby, Bobby said, isn't that a great show? And I went, yeah, it's a great show. Thanks, Bobby. I really appreciate it. Great show. Terrific show. Wonderful show. Loved it. Thank you. Wonderful night at the theater. I have to say, though, that it, it wasn't boring. That was the difference. It wasn't boring because it was so bad. I, 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 it was like, you know, looking at an accident by the side of the road. You just can't stop looking, you know. The Amazon Women of the Moon yes, on Broadway? Something like that, yeah. G good example. Good example. Well, it doesn't look like we're going to get many callers today, but who knows if I do this any number of times, I could start getting callers. People probably don't know about it yet either. Well, I put it up there for a day and let people know. Uh, and uh, uh, we had a lot of people earlier and then a lot of people left. I don't know. Must be me. Yeah. And, but, but you know, I'll also, this is only being done on, on uh, Facebook. So I'll keep it going for another five minutes or so. If somebody would like to call and keep it going, then I'll keep going, you know. Uh, let me see here. Anything else uh, in these? Uh, by the way, Coldplay and Ariana Grande are going to hold a free concert in Manchester uh, in about a week uh, to just, you know, honor the dead. And to just say, hey, you know, we're not going to let them stop us. And I think that's uh, pretty good. Also, I think they say that Miley Cyrus is going to show there, up there. That may be more of a penalty than it is a, <laughs> no. Actually, I like Miley Cyrus. I think she's okay. Okay. Amazon shares hit $1,000. Uh, no accounting for the fact that supposedly to this day, if you ask them, what, are they in the profit? They go, no, we've never been in the profit. And yet they're one of the most successful companies in America. And I was talking to somebody the other day about they've really ruined retail. Yeah. You know, I mean, you go to retail. I want to tell you a stupid story. A girlfriend decided she wanted to get me because she now that I'm, I've, I've lost a lot of weight, she wants to see how slim she can make me look, okay? So... 
she wanted to, she didn't like the jeans that she had bought me the last time because they were baggy. You know, they were kind of the loose fitting jeans. So she said, let's get you the skinny jeans. So we went down and we got the skinny jeans. And uh, I brought them home and they looked great. They looked terrific. I looked like I was when I was, you know, uh, in my 40s. <laughs> no, when I was in my 40s. And it, look, it looks really good. So she decided to go online and buy some more for me. So she went to the Gap line, uh, online store. Now, you got to know when you go to Gap, Gap is like Bed Bath & Beyond. Whenever you go to either of those stores, uh, at Bad Bed Bath & Beyond, there's always something where you can get 20% off. There's always, bring this coupon, get 20% off. So basically, everything you buy at Bed Bath & Beyond is 20% off, okay? Jacked up 20%, right. too. So, so uh, uh, when, you go to, when you go to Gap, it's always 50% off. Everything's always 50% off. At least every time I, I've ever gone in there, sign on every rack, 50% off. When you buy this merchandise right now, you know, whatever. And so they're 50% off. So she calls to, to uh, the, uh, right, gets online with the Gap, and she wants to order the pants. And she finally has to call them and ask them a question. Where do I get my 50% off? And they go, Oh, no, there's nothing. There's no deals online. Wouldn't you think it'd be deals online rather than at the brick and mortar because it's cheaper for them to do it online than at the brick and mortar? Would seem logical. Yeah. And instead, what happened was she, she said, fuck you, we'll, we'll, go back, we'll go back to the gap. You know, it's cheaper, even with a cab fare and all that, you know. It's cheaper, so we're going to go back to the Gap so she can get me another pair of the of the skinny jeans, uh, slim jeans. There's a skinny, there's an actual skinny, but I, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to tempt fate with that. You know. Let me see here. Anything else that uh, that uh, uh, is big news? Um, Trump lost his communication guy. Oh, oh yes, yes. I had that as a uh, first story here. As a matter of fact. Not that it's a big deal or anything. I'd leave, too. I think you're going to see a lot of people leaving. I, I think they, 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 it's, and I bet they don't put it on their resume. <laughs> uh, top White House communication staffers resigned as President Donald Trump considers a major staff overhaul. How many days has he been president and already he's thinking of overhauling his staff? How many staff overalls has he done already? Yeah, amid intensifying inquiries into his campaign's <laughs> dealings with Russia, the departure of Michael Dubke, or Dub, uh, Dubke, I guess, Trump's communications director, comes as the aides and outside advisors say Trump has grown increasingly frustrated by allegations of Russian meddling in the 2016 election and revelations of possible ties between his campaign and Moscow. Trump tweeted Tuesday. Oh, he tweets? Isn't that amazing? Russian officials must be laughing at the U.S. and how the lame excuse for why the Dems lost the election has taken over the fake news. Now, this is the thing that bothers me. And look at me, folks. This is what bothers me. Anytime they want to discredit any story, they throw out the word fake news. Okay? So... All I got to say about that is John Barron. Huh? You know who John Barron was? No, who was John Barron? John Barron was Donald Trump's fake PR guy. Oh, was, really? Oh, yeah, oh, 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 yeah, it was Donald Trump. Yeah. Right. Fake, fake, fake news there. Yep. And he always, and he's, he's about it. he would call, he would so call. He, he knows it when he sees it. When he calls shows, when he called shows, he didn't even disguise his voice. Yeah, no. But that was the name he is. John Barron, I believe it. Because it's the same name as his son now, right? So it's like, and I think it was oh, John. Oh, I see. Aaron uh, Trump, uh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Did you see the video of him flipping off the uh, Italian uh, president? I didn't see it, but I heard about it. He flipped him off? Yeah. He gave him the finger? Yeah. You know, he went like this. He, he, he suddenly started scratching his face with his middle finger. While he was starting his speech, and then laughed. 
and then laughed. What is what is with this fucking moron? <laughs> you said it. You know, I'm not asking for anything else from Trump. I'm not asking for competence. I'm not asking for him to change his political bent. Just give the office some dignity. Respect. You know, there is no fucking dignity with Trump and that and that office. And I'm I'm sick and tired of it. You know? I mean, it's like he's treating it like a bath mat for crying out loud. So, I don't know. But anyway. And House of Cards started on Netflix tonight, today. So you got them all watched it? Yeah, but no. No, I haven't even started. I don't dare start without girlfriend otherwise because she, she's going to want to binge watch them. And I don't know. I, I would rather, rather than binge watch, I'd rather just watch one a day. You know, rather than two or three a day. But, man, we finished binge-watching a great show this weekend. The first season of American Crime, which was just sensational. When it was over with, we looked at each other and went, this is the best television we've seen on networks in recent memory. What What's it on? It's at, uh, it was on ABC. They canceled it, finally, ABC? after, th after okay. three seasons. Yeah. And it's, it was done by John Ridley, who did, wrote 12 Years a Slave. And it's just, a, just an amazing show. And two people on the show won Emmys for it. You know, it's one of those shows that flew under the radar, even though it won, an, won Emmys. And so it, was it Netflix or was it uh, no, Amazon or it, no, ABC? Just, well, you binge watched it on. Oh, we binge watched it on uh, Netflix because now Netflix. all three seasons are on Netflix. Okay, okay. So, but uh, I'm telling people watch American Crime. I mean, it's just absolutely sensational. And that first season is just absolutely amazing. Well, hey guys, I've really loved this. You know, I've really enjoyed uh, getting together with you and hanging out and 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 uh, uh, being uh, convivial. As it Hello? were, and, no Phil, hmm? and no Phil. You know we have. I was able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> yeah, and you're very interesting, <laughs> Bob. Now that you can, now that you can have something to say, you know, and can say something that you have to say. Uh, but uh, uh, it's been uh, been uh, been fun. I'm gonna probably do this again in another couple of days. You know, when I feel like it. Uh, it doesn't seem to get the audience, and it doesn't seem to get the callers. But, you know, if we were to do it every day, I suppose it would start getting callers and getting listeners. But when, whenever we do it, we will do it at 3 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time, which makes it noon out on the West Coast. And where you are, Scott, it uh, makes it uh, 2 o'clock. And I love it because it, it's just brighter. I have the sunlight pouring through Bob's window, and there's... Uh, there's uh, uh, the trees and everything outside. You have to tell me whenever you do it, you will do it from outside somewhere. Oh, Scott. I, unless it's raining or something. Yeah, of course. I want you to do it even if it's raining. I want. Oh, see, <laughs> I want. I want to. See. I remember how it rains in Texas, though. It's it's oh. uh, downpours. Downpours. Sounds good. Yeah, I want to. I want to thank both of you for uh, for joining me today. Uh, well, this it was is, fun. Huh? It Thanks was fun. Nice. Oh, absolutely, it was fun. And it will shall be even more fun as we uh, uh, as we try it again sometime very very soon. Uh, thank you all for having joined me. I really really appreciate it. Okay, well, okay, well. ladies and gentlemen, Bobby Berth and uh, Scott Boddicker. Thank you guys. Uh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I gotta uh, get myself over here. Where are we? Uh, well, here, let me let me just bring it back to me. There we go. See you guys later. Bye. Bye. Okay, and I'll sign them off so that I don't have that problem. Okay, and then I go there, and then what we do is we start playing what is essentially uh, the theme that we have created for this. I, I don't even know if this is going to remain the theme, but I do it anyway. Uh, but there it is. Hey, thank you so much for joining me on this first edition, this first issue of GabNet's Rampage. We'll see you again next time. Don't know when, just keep looking at the Facebook page to find out. I'll let you know, and uh, we may do another one later this week. Thanks for joining me. I'm Alex Bennett. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.